Okay, this is our typical setup for a total knee replacement surgery. Uh, the patient's position here, this is obviously a left total knee. She's had the right one done. Uh, we're gonna match it up here, left total knee. We do this with the uh, Rosa robot, which is ready here to go. Uh, once we've got our exposure, we take a bunch of points uh, to template the knee. That goes into the computer and the robot uh, helps uh, template for our cuts, both on the femoral side and the tibial side. Uh, mainly to help with soft tissue balancing across the knee. That's where the robot has really been a game changer in the last about 10 years of total uh, knee replacement surgery. Um, so we're gonna get all of our uh, points dialed in here, goes into the computer, and then we're gonna play with it to make sure it's 100% accurate and balanced for a good, good overall result. So we've got a tibial array here and a femoral array. And these communicate up there with a sensor that loops back to the computer and then to the robot. So what we're doing here is coordinating uh, the linkage here between these two arrays and our robot, as well as the computer. We're gonna take a number of points, both on the femoral side and the tibial side. That's gonna go into the computer uh, and allow us to get our cuts, both femur and tibia, completely dialed for an appropriately tensioned total knee. And when I say tension, I'm talking about soft tissue tension um, in both extension and flexion, as well as the flexion arc and range of motion. Um, and that's been one of the big, big improvements here uh, in the technology around this procedure uh, is through the use of the robot here, which you can see coming in, um, just allowing us to get the knee really, really balanced. Okay, so the first step here is femoral head center. Uh, this is 14 points. I'm taking the leg through a full range of motion here. I'm watching the computer and at each Stop here. The computer is collecting data from our two arrays, our tibial and our femoral arrays. And this is used to determine where the center of the femoral head is, which obviously loops back and helps us position our total knee. That part is done. Next up here is, this is our pointer. So obviously these are all connected and it's collecting data, it's sending it back into the computer. So femoral axis point here is next. Good. Next is our posterior condyle. So you can see here two feet. This is gonna go into the knee. It's gonna hook on the back of the femoral condyles. And I'm gonna place this into about three degrees of flexion, which I'm looking at right there, done anterior trochlear groove. Obviously very important for patella tracking in the total knee. This is the posterior trochlear groove here. Good, medial epicondyles next. Distal medial condyle. So I'm gonna plot a couple of different points here. One, two, and three. We're gonna go to the lateral side here. This is the lateral epicondyle. Good, and again, we're gonna plot some points here on the lateral, lateral distal condyle. And this is the third. And then importantly, in the front of the knee along the anterior cortex here, so we don't notch with our implant, this is the anterior cortex. Two and three. Perfect. Now we go down to the ankle. So next part, we've already done the hip center. So this is the lateral malleolus here. Good, and then I'm gonna go over to the medial malleolus of the ankle. That's it. Coming up to the knee again, I'm gonna take the medial third of the tibial tubercle, which is done. Next is the tibial axis point. So this is the ACL insertion onto the tibia here. Good. Next is the PCL insertion. So I'm sliding this into the back of the knee there, feeling off the posterior ridge. And once I've got that, I hold steady. Final two points, medial plateau, tibial plateau, and then lateral tibial plateau. And that's it, those are all of our points. All of this data now goes into the computer. We're gonna take the knee through a range of motion here. So first I'm just getting an idea of what we're at. So he gets, she gets to about 136 degrees of flexion and you can probably tell here she's got a flexion contracture. So that's saying 11.5 11, 11 degrees of flexion. If I push, get her closer to terminal extension, but she wants to sit at about 
say four, but we're gonna try and get her about straight there. So this is next. This is valgus stress. And then vera stress. Did we get that, guys? Good. And then we're gonna go into about 90 degrees of flexion here. It's perfect. And we're gonna go varus valgus again. So first, you guys got that? Good, other side. You guys got that? Good. And that's it. So those are all of the points there. Now it goes in the computer. We're gonna look at our cuts here. So we've templated all of our data points here to determine our cut with the robot. Uh, I use this pointer here to help guide it. The computer is gonna capture that, which it's done. And now you're gonna see the robot come in. Let's go with our retractors. All right, so this is our, this is for our distal femoral cut here. We good to move? Okay, so we're gonna get this positioned. Good, we're gonna place our retractors here. There's one on the medial side, two on the lateral side, saw. We good to go, guys? Good. There's our femoral cut done. I'm just gonna make sure we're completely happy with that. That's great. Okay, the robot's gonna come out. So we've done our femoral cut. The next thing is to validate our cut. So I'm gonna place this over the distal femur and there we can see our cut's absolutely perfect. They're gonna collect that. Good, and that goes back into the robot and the computer here for further templating of our tibial cut. Okay, let's come in for our tibia. You guys good? Okay, so we've done our, I'll take this off. So we've done our femoral cut. Robot's in here, we've pinned the tibial guide. Now we're gonna complete our tibial cut. I've got two retractors in here, one lateral, one medial, protecting the important structures. So that's our tibial cut done. Move our pins. Gonna disengage the robot. Good. So I use this throughout the case. This is what I call my magic wash. So this is dilute betadine mixed with vancomycin antibiotic. And we're constantly irrigating the knee uh, with this antibacterial solution uh, to help with uh, infection prophylaxis throughout the case. So another thing that's changed in the last few years, let's say, is that this is uh, tourniquet-free surgery. So we don't actually use a tourniquet at all for this, this case. Um, and part of the thing that we're doing here is we're using this cautery device and I'm just going throughout the areas in the back of the knee joint here to make sure that we've got all of the small bleeding vessels so that the patient doesn't end up with any knee effusion or hematoma uh, in the knee joint after this case. And then finally, this is our joint juice. So this is a combination of local anesthetic, some long acting local anesthetic, long acting bupivacaine um, and some anti-inflammatory. And we're injecting this here throughout the posterior aspect or back of the knee, which really, really provides excellent pain control for patients after surgery. We'll go with another one of those. And this stuff lasts for a few days after the operation um, to really give the patient good pain relief um, to not only, not only serve to make them more comfortable, but also to help prevent the need for any opioid pain medication uh, after the operation. Femur, okay, trial components going in. Looks good, mallets? Yeah, I'm over the edge as well. So this is gonna be a narrow, guys. Is that gonna go straight on? Tibia? Good. Mallet. Good. Good. Okay, so final implants are in. Uh, we're just checking on the computer here, the numbers. So that says it's about one degree flex. We started at about 10 degrees of flexion, so I'm really happy with that. And if I just give her a little bit of pressure there, she goes to about two degrees, two and a half degrees of extension. Uh, we maintained her varus, so she's in about 
seven degrees of varus there, which is anatomic for her. I'm just gonna test medially, that's so, so stable. And then again, laterally here, also very stable. And then we're gonna check her range of motion arc and patella tracking. It's 137 degrees of flexion and then all the way extended. Really stable, well-balanced knee. She's gonna be happy with that. And that's a total knee arthroplasty using the robot.